everyone, and welcome back to Master Detective Archives Raincode. In the last episode, we began our little uh, deep dive into the mystery labyrinth, specifically for, for Karin's death, murder, moida, and uh, ultimately came to the conclusion that I had already come to of that everyone is simultaneously guilty and not guilty. You know, everyone had a role to play. Except none of them are the killers, either. Because mm. they couldn't have done it without each other. <laughs> mm, curious. Well, I mean, not, like... No, okay, not, not really, like, curious, because I'd already kind of come to that. Let's just move on, shall we? Because we're now looking at the case from a different perspective. Uh, oh no, there he is! I was gonna say a, a, a different perspective without Desuhiko, but no, he, he's here! What? what magic? What absolute sorcery? Yeah, it's magic. So true, Himiko, so true. Oh, well, not, uh, not even two minutes in. Why did the incident happen? Presumably because of Aiko's murder, right? No fair. Yuma gets to have all the fun. Oh, come on, man. Why are you jealous of this? The question is, why did this happen? I guess we're on the why done it route. But did why done what now? I know what you're thinking, Desuhiko. Get your mind out of the gutter. It's about the reason why the case occurred. Meaning, this is the route where we seek the motive. Looks like we need to focus on figuring out the culprit's motive from here. Yeah, I know cases always deal with motive, but... Wouldn't it have been better to start with this route from the get-go? Oh, uh, <laughs> well actually, yeah, probably, Desuhiko. Um, since we have our three suspects, we probably should have covered their motive first to even see if they stand as suspects. Uh, but mystery games do not do motive first. They never do that. In fact, sometimes motive doesn't even get brought up. Ace Attorney. Well, we only know this route is important because we cleared out the how routes. That's how it goes when it comes to solving mysteries and dungeons. Oh, uh, sorry. I, I guess that's how it is. <laughs> you, Absolutely right, Shinigami. No, Desuhiko, you're on to something here. <laughs> Let's keep going for now. Wait, so what was even the point of slicing my neck if we just walked through the, the, the door? <sighs> you know, Shinigami, have you ever considered maybe don't fly on the edges? It, it's Before clearly we proving a bit of a problem in this motive. case. What kind of person was Karen anyway? Was she cute? Yes, but more importantly, she was next in line to be star of the theater club. That uh, Yuma. She was considered to be the best actress that. among the club's current members. So the culprit was envious because she was so popular. They killed Karen so they could become the star instead. No, I don't think it's that simple. Yeah, that's just an unfortunate hey, coincidence who you for all of them. Six months ago, the leading member of the theater club also died in a separate case. Top actresses dying one after another? Was their club cursed or something? I don't know, maybe. The name of the student who died was Aiko. Her death was ruled a suicide by jumping off the school, but Kurumi doubted that was the case. Kurumi, huh? She's all right. All right? Anyway, I doubt it's a coincidence for people to die in such quick succession. This case may have been triggered by Aiko's death. So if we find the truth behind Aiko's death, maybe we can figure out the motive in this case. The truth behind Aiko's death. We don't really have any evidence on this, but it is going to be important to figuring out what that will work, well, at least why things happened. Hey, look! Look, it's Komaru! Is that Aiko? Whoa, she's cute too! Let's go talk to her! She's about to get a taste of my full and undivided attention. Well, uh, we do need to listen to her, so... You can already tell women will be his downfall. 
Oh well, it's not like you're any better off with yours truly, Master. At least you're self-aware? Guys, wait for me! I can't fly, nor do I have horny speed. Please, wait. Just stop. No, oh, just waiting for me. Oh, nice. Was that Desihiko? It's quite the scream. What the? Come on, concentrate, concentrate! We're nearly at the top. Why do I? Why do I have to answer a question? No, I guess I don't. Oh well, now I do. Yuma, this is bad. The ground's giving way beneath our feet. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> Okay, that was good, Shinigami. I like that. Heiko. Do she even has the Aho game? Catcher. I love the tragic types. Oh, she's more than tragic. She's dead. No, we're trying to figure out the truth behind her death. Good luck, Master. Okay, let's see. What do we got here? Was Aiko's death six months ago suicide or homicide? Probably homicide. Aiko's death six months ago was actually a result of murder. I don't think we have any proof of that, but that's, well, that's what we suppose. Where was Aiko murdered? Rooftop? Probably the flower bed. The location of Aiko's murder is the flower bed. What weapon was used to kill Aiko? Poison from the chemistry lab, brick from the flower bed. No, it was poison again, definitely, for certain. The brick with Aiko's blood on it had a very unnatural splatter pattern. After the culprit hit her with the brick, they returned it to its original position. I, mean, I wasn't really paying attention to the blood splatter, but who murdered Aiko? Probably Karin, right? This is the answer! It kind of has to be. Aiko's death was not a suicide by jumping, and Cotton clearly lied in her testimony. Cotton killed Aiko. Now, I don't remember the lie Karin told in her testimony, but all right, let's keep following her, Yuma. I mean, presumably that she just found her, I guess. But I mean, I saw that coming a mile away as well from the whole. Well, Karin was a victim in all this, right? Kind of lines they were they were going with at first. I can tell Aiko's death wasn't a suicide from the evidence photos. Her shoes were neatly placed on the roof, but there was dirt on them that looked like it came from the flower bed. Ah, that's what that all was. I, I guess I didn't really notice the, the dirt, which seems strange now that I'm looking at this again, because I saw all the blue on it. I think Aiko was told to meet at the flowers behind the school building and then murdered there. So the shoes were taken to the roof afterwards. The murder weapon is likely a brick from the flower bed. Uh, yeah, okay, that is... That is quite the strange blood pattern. I hadn't really paid attention to it before. I think we'd only seen this photo like three times or something. And we, we don't have it in evidence, so I didn't really pay much attention to it. But yeah, that is literally Im an impossible blood stain. The brick with Aiko's blood on it had a very unnatural splatter pattern. If she fell from above and hit her head, the blood stain wouldn't get cut off in that way. I'm sure that after the culprit hit her with the brick, they returned it to its original position. But do you have evidence that Karen did it? If Aiko didn't die from jumping, Karen's testimony makes her highly suspicious. She said she heard something fall and went to inspect it. I get it. Hearing a sound that never happened means she's obviously lying. Karen lied. And the reason why she lied? She made it appear like Aiko jumped. If that's the case, then the one who killed Aiko is Karen. Which gives everyone motive to get back at her. And does get, I mean, it gives the whole team motive, right? Certainly makes sense why all three of them would try to get her. Well, makes sense, doesn't uh? She disappeared. 
doesn't make it in any way right, but... Damn it! I can't even help the girl who needs it most! To be fair, considering that I'm pretty sure all of these kids are, uh, Amaterasu court kids... Yeah, they probably do think that just murdering people's morally okay, huh? Help her? She was dead long before you could help her. Look, let him be delusional a little bit. His heart was maybe in the right place this anyway, time. this must be the roof I go supposedly jump from. A thin roof. Uh, hey. Why did Cotton kill Aiko? I don't know, maybe for the, the top spot. I thought an all-girls school would be more sunshine and rainbows than... murder. Yeah, it's usually more like, um... A lot of, uh, repressed emotions. Let's go with that. If a brick was used as the murder weapon, then it could have been an impulsive crime. So Cotton might not have been planning to kill Aiko when she called her there. You mean they were talking and it turned into a crime of passion? That's so cliche. Well, it is the most common way murders go down. Sorry, Shinigami. Not, not all of them are these incredible locked room, big setup on stage play scenarios. Most murders happen between family members around Christmas because of crimes of passion. Maybe they were discussing their acting careers. They had a disagreement and it turned to violence. Well, if this caused the other murder case, then is the motive revenge? Yeah, they weren't fighting over Aiko's spot. They wanted to get back at Cotton for taking it away. Meaning the culprit is whoever cares the most about Aiko? Uh-oh, Kurumi. <laughs> then which of the suspects is it? Unfortunately, all of them. In fact, where do we even go from here? We got the motive, but there's still no path. You don't think we have to, like, jump ourselves, do you? This is different from the other dead ends. I think there's a mystery around here. Something must be hidden here. Get looking, squad. Alright, well, ah, uh, we'll talk to- well, we can't talk to the peeps. So, what's hidden where, huh? Around these pipes, perhaps? No. Oh, look into the distance. Oh. Hey, Let's get deep. Check it out. Is that the how roots we were looking for? Eh, they all like connect up, huh? Because of course they do. They're all connected. We're so high up. When did this happen? Uh, when I say they're all connected, I don't mean the rooms. Obviously, they're all connected. I mean all the, these people are connected. Master, look over there! What's that? It doesn't seem connected to anything else. Which means that could be the Who location. So the true culprit is over there then? But how do we reach it? It's not connected to any other route. What, are you freezing up? Scared of heights or something? Oh, it's not that. Uh, about those three roots. A pen? You carry that around with you all the time? That is surely not the strangest thing to carry around with you at all times. But do please don't tell me that Desuhiko is the only one who's noticed that they all connect up. Of course. Who knows when I'll be asked for my autograph? <laughs> All right, King. Done. Isn't it perfect? I'm just as good at drawing maps as I am at remembering a pretty face. Yeah, it does look like a good tube map. I'll give this you that. This is the how routes when seen from above, right? What about it? Well, they all start and end at the same spot. Well, this is a dungeon, right? So maybe there are some secret paths in here. Secret paths? See? If you look at it this way, doesn't it all seem like the same road? You're right. The three how routes are connected into a single route all the way to the who room. Wait, all three are connected? That's it! I think I've got it! That's the hidden truth behind the how route! 
They all did it! There's only one explanation for how the victim could have been poisoned! What? Seriously? Not bad. You finally made yourself useful. Yeah, I, I can't believe we didn't notice that just by looking at it. <laughs> Yay! Shinigami complimented me! I love you, Shinigami! Wasn't I a good boy? I deserve a treat, right? <laughs> God damn it. Oh, he's if fucking dead. You got this, I'll back you up. Lay it all out. Oh, it's time for barrel. It's barrel time. Desahiko, look away. I don't want you getting too horny. Okay, I mean, this is... As before, this is going exactly as expected. Okay, what exactly are we trying to prove, though? The only way the crime was possible was by having an... Oh, it's gonna be accomplice. It's gonna be accomplice, okay. I saw AC, like, here. Let's put, put my spelling to the test. Uh, ac, com, comp, so I assume it's this one. Comp, list. There we go. Easy. Hangman's Gambit, who? I still don't know why you do this, Shinigami. Why, why do you pose like this? And what are you blasting at this time? You're gonna make a rainbow, not a rainbow, a heart bridge across the Howl roots? I just part in the clouds, I see. That's right, accomplices. The truth of this case is that Yoshiko, Warona, and Kurane were all accomplices and committed this crime together. Sure did. Accomplices? But don't they hate each other's guts? It's the truth. I realized it once you drew this map, Desuhiko. The three How routes that we explored were all dead ends. Each of them were suspects, but they were all ruled out because of certain details of the case. It will only work if they all work together. That yes, yes, sense. yes. If we look at them separately, we get dead ends. But by connecting all three roots like this, and looking at it as a single criminal act, it clearly becomes one path forward. They were accomplices that committed a single crime. This murder would have been impossible to commit alone. We figured that out during the How route. But if the three of them worked together, they could make it possible. Ooh, you're a pickaxe. What's this? I guess we're supposed to break the wall? Sounds like fun! I'm in! It's all thanks to my help, don't you think? And don't you forget it. Yeah, apparently, despite the fact that we should have been able to just see that with our eyes. You are the one who's going to forget it. Anyway, <laughs> let's check it out. We have to make sure we're on the right track. Uh, well, Kamikaze, also a Dragon Quest spell, just kind of blows you up, so why don't we zoom? <laughs> that must do something else then, right? Surely? By separating the house, the three of them divided up the tasks that needed to be done to pull off the murder. Don't you think so, Yuma? Yeah. I think it's the only way. Huh? Oh man! Yeah! I'll never get used to that one. <laughs> oh, you sure sound confident. How did the three work together to pull off an impossible crime? And now, there's a new problem to solve. We have to expose the secret behind their complicity. How exactly they cooperated together and the timeline of the crime. G got it. The timeline, huh? 
Then the first thing to discuss is... How the... Sorry, it's this, that, that. Yushko Warner. Poison brought to the theater hall. You sure about that? Kurane. There we go. There's the other one. Yes. We just got to get there first. Let's start with the poison being brought to the theater hall. Their conspiring began with how was the poison brought to the theater hall. It's a route we already explored to the very end. So let's blast through it. Hey, wait. Oh man, how nice to TV our way through. <laughs> the only person who could have brought the poison to the theater hall was Yoshko, right? Yeah, the poison neutralizes after 30 minutes, so it had to be brought into the theater during the show. As the production assistant, only Yoshko could have done it. Looking back, the reason they chose poison as the murder weapon was to establish an alibi. The poison was only active for 30 minutes, which gave the other girls an alibi. Yoshka went to the lab for the poison as soon as the performance began. She had the extra glass hidden in her bag. And after she brushed poison onto it, she put it back in her bag and returned to her seat in the front row as if nothing happened. The problem is, what happened next? Yeah. Okay, what did Yoshiko do with the poisoned glass after bringing it? I guess it would have to be handed it to Warren, right? Isn't this the how was the poison mixed into the glass root? Wow! It really connected. Right. Incredible, right? Again? Yeah, we got one more after this, Desuhika. Better, better make sure that grip strength's good. D hey, you said Yoshiko handed the poison glass over to Waruna, but... Waruna was performing on stage, right? How could she receive the glass while on stage? The only time I can think of is when they turned off the lights. Yoshiko sat on the right edge of the front row close to the wings, where the actors enter and exit from scenes. She probably stood up when the lights went out and left the poisoned glass near the right wing. Even if she couldn't get on stage, she could at least do that within five seconds. Then, Warna picked up the glass and hid it under her costume. The costume check happens before the performance. So she got around that by receiving the cup during the performance. I see. So they passed the baton during the five seconds the lights were out. I don't know if I fully buy that though. Like five seconds they did that. No one saw. And Warren hit that in her costume? The two of them must have rehearsed it as much as the rest of the play. But what happened after that? Suppose Waruna did get the poison glass. How did she swap it with the real glass while the play was still ongoing? A few moments after the blackout, there's a scene where Waruna approaches the shelf. Alright, which is something that we pointed out as suspicious many, many times, and I hadn't really considered that suspicious. It only lasts two or three seconds, but Waruna's hands on the shelf are completely hidden from the audience. At that moment, Warner could have switched out the original glass with the poisoned one. So they used the play itself for their seemingly impossible crime. Don't know how with that outfit, but yeah, apparently. <laughs> Talk about guts. This is something only thespians could pull off. <laughs> Shinigami? <laughs> Isn't there a safer way down? Sorry, big guy. Master! Hurry up and break this one down, too! Right. Splat. How was the poisoned glass chosen? Uh, Kurane guided to it. With the spotlight. Alright, we got this one, too. 
Only a bit more. Let's keep going. Wait. Can we take a break? This is the final one. It's the How Was the Poison Glass Chosen route. From here, it's exactly as we solved it before. Kurume told Karin beforehand to take the glass the spotlight hits first. And then, after confirming the poison's glass from the catwalk above, the spotlight was pointed directly at it. And that's the method behind the murder weapon. Method? Sounds more like madness if you ask me. Ah, <laughs> oh, wordplay! That solves this mystery. We've almost reached the truth. But seriously? That's terrible. Huh? Why? Wait. Oh, God damn it! So I'm now gonna have to come up with a Desuhiko voice on the fly. Uh, I guess something like this, then, huh? Yeah, sure. I guess we can do something like this. Well, that means that we're about to lose the lives of three little lovely ladies. Because oh. I haven't gotten Shinigami to fall for me yet. Oh, uh, yeah, that too. That's not gonna happen. Even if you stayed here for a hundred years. In fact, I basically hate your guts. You know, beyond the hate, there could be love. Yeah, you know, just just hide in those feelings. You know? It's kind of like traveling the globe. You and I can go in opposite directions, but eventually we'll meet. That's a stretch. <laughs> I feel sick. This is the last wall. Who Master. murdered Karin? Are you ready? Let's solve this thing! All three of them! Right. Just as I surmised in the beginning. Yes, it fell. It does feel good to be right, but we hmm. At the same time, this feels too easy. Like, this seems so obvious. But, mm. And behind that door is the Who Room. We finally made it. It's time to end this, Master. <sighs> yeah, I guess this is it. We're just gonna go and uh, kill three ladies. Shouldn't have murdered Karin, I guess. Looks like all the culprits are here, but there. Why do they look so sad? Mm, yeah, I wonder why. Context clues. Context clues. Context clues. How boring! You call yourselves the final bosses of the mystery labyrinth? Then start acting like it. Might as well guard the truth till the end at this point. Well, we haven't really seen Martina at all. Which is a little concerning. There. Being a little conflicted there, Yuma. Being a little conflicted. I mean that. that it's not that I don't empathize, but... You know, I'm gonna say it. Murder was not the right way to go about this revenge scheme. <laughs> you know? I, I, I'm just gonna say it. I don't, I don't know if that's a controversial take. Uh, it shouldn't be. But uh, murder is not the answer. Though I do feel bad for them, considering that, you know... I mean, their friend was murdered, and it was, like, actively covered up by the, their police force. I, I understand that they may have felt, um, you know, there was no other choice here. Let's do this, master! Alright, 
what the buttons do. Tackle! Tackle! Oh, and is it now going to be, I want to take the blame all for myself? Uh, we're not going to do that, are we? Destroy the wall with a solution key! Yeah, it, it, it's going to be... It's going to be all of these, isn't it? I'm just going to slowly put the piece... Or not put the pieces, but the... Well, I guess the pieces. Put the picture together, huh? And I'm not happy about it. Shut up. Don't come any closer. I I did it all alone. Yeah, I, I think you. they are. They're now gonna default to the it wasn't closer. them, it was all me. <laughs> oh, don't do that! You're not There it is. You're wrong. There's that one. Ah, come on. You did it. Great job. That's right. Oh, I'm feeling like shit, Shinigami. This isn't feeling good. Kind of bad. I mean, look, look. Murder was not the answer. However, in this very, 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 very corrupt place, I can see why this felt like the only way to get around it. Unfortunately for you, vigilante justice is not justice. I thought they hated each other. No, that probably isn't true. That. If you put together the three photos they each have... What? So they're all in the same picture? That's the truth. I really thought with the tear there'd be someone else there at least. Probably Kurumi, but... You know, I appreciate that again this was all like a... Uh, drama club thing. Man, but I kind of want to show him a bit of mercy. No. 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 And I like how one of them's aligned with each hey, obstacle no, as well. Quite categorically wrong. Although I, w you know, what I will say, I mean, th this case has been exceedingly easy, which is a, a little bit disappointing. But at the same time, I appreciate that, you know, clearly they know that at this point. Well, not even at this point. Clearly, they know that by now that this is like super fucking easy. And they, they aren't trying to hide it. They're just let, they're just letting you have a little bit of a feel the day. Truth of the case. Huh? And maybe have a little bit of feels as well. Maybe I would feel worse if, you know. Again, hot take. Murder is bad? Maybe?
I will say, yeah, the fact that Martina didn't really try anything to stop us this time. This is just a guess, but you three weren't actually on bad terms with each other, were you? Yeah, I... hmm... Why didn't she try and stop us? I mean, I guess thematically it kind of makes sense, right? Like, I, I said this a couple of episodes ago, like, I could not believe that she, who felt more, you know, not like final bossy, but she'd at least be saved for the next chapter, right? And we'd have one more grunt before we actually got to her, then Yomi, then uh, the, the big boss. And I, I guess maybe that's what they're doing, and they just used her here? In for fact, some reason? it was all an act to get revenge for Aiko. You all cherished the same picture with her. It was originally a single photo of you all together, with Aiko in the middle. You were all close friends. And this ended up all being one giant... Act. <laughs> To make it seem like you wouldn't do, wouldn't, wouldn't be capable of this. You would, you'd never work together. Very interesting. You, you already planned the, uh, the long haul there. I guess you all just immediately knew Karin did it. And when you connect the pictures together, everyone is there, smiling. So, why? Come on, we've got work to do before you get all sappy. Let's go. One more push and we'll be done with this labyrinth. <sighs> what would a hero do? A real defender of justice would defeat evil here and now and be done with it. But I'm no hero. All I want is the truth. And the truth is right here. So why go any further? Will solving this mystery really make anyone happy? I mean, no. Aside from maybe Karin's parents, but no, it will not. But, unfortunately, this, well, maybe not unfortunately. I, I'm kind of interested to see where they want to go with this, but, um... This is the kind of remove your emotions justice Hollera was talking about last time. Master, do you sympathize with them? That's not something a detective should do. Your job is to solve mysteries, isn't it? If so, you have to expose the truth. Hmm. I mean... And I'm trying to. Can we get out without solving this mystery? Can we just leave? I mean, we've solved this all. Like we we know the answers, but I, I have a funny feeling we can't just leave, right? I'm pretty sure that's how this works. You have to prove it in a way anyone can understand and anyone can see. Detectives aren't defenders of justice; they're defenders of truth. True. I mean, if you want to look at it, that, that's that's the hollower way of looking at it. Defenders of truth. A detective must never overlook a mystery. Any and all truths must be exposed. A detective must always prioritize solving a case. Emotions must be discarded to reach a perfect solution through a perfect deduction. Mm-hmm. It's easier said than done. Yeah, and I still don't necessarily, uh... You know, it does- uh, the, the WDO does still sound like the ultimate villains here, I'm not gonna lie, but... I mean, unfortunately we've come this far, we literally can't get out unless we do this, but... Yuma, if you can't do it, I can take your place. No, I'll do it. I'll take responsibility. I'll see this through. Time to fucking kill three girls. Let's go. Really ramping up. First we killed one person, then two, now three. 
Oh, I was kind of joking when I said this was going to be a pattern before. I guess four people are dying next chapter, huh? In this one, it's pretty fucking good. Sorry, what I say in this one. In this game, it's pretty fucking good. Okay, glasses are swapped. Impulsively beats her to death. What a great little <laughs> brick. Oh, oh, wrong button. Brick. Uh, we're gonna have to go a little bit later for this one. What did Yoshiko apply to the glass? Wait, actually, whoa. These glasses are swapped. And noted script. What did Warrener do? She swapped those dilly damn glasses. Yeah, then we'll look see. Suicide by jumping, spotlight, chemistry lab, poison. Uh, suicide. Got a bit of suicide right there. Love to see it. You don't love to see it, obviously. Where was Yoshiko heading? Chemistry lab. And it was... Poison? Uh, what did Karin use to guide? Okurane even. Spotlight. Did that because of what was in the script. And the killer is all of you, but the the, the thing that connects you all is, is Aiko. There she is. Happy little Komaru face. Would she be happy that you three murdered someone, even if it was out of revenge for, for her death, huh? Would that have satisfied her? Step right up! an academy stage the death of a high school girl casting a shadow over four bickering theater club members truth bombs are about to be dropped time for the deduction denouement this case begins with Aiko's death six months ago Aiko was thought to have committed suicide by jumping off the roof truth caught and murdered her the shoes left on the roof had dirt on them from the flower bed at the crime scene. The blood stains on the bricks were also unnatural. And it was obvious that an amateur had faked it. If it wasn't a suicide, it would contradict Cotton's testimony. However, she didn't originally intend to kill Aiko. It was a crime of passion. So they got into an argument. Cotton saw red, then boom? Women are so scary! Yoshiko, Warona, and Kurane probably realized the truth behind what happened. The three teamed up to avenge Aiko. They used the dress rehearsal to commit this crime. Regardless of the reason, getting together to plan a murder is pretty crazy. Yeah, sure is. Yoshiko in the audience to bring the poisoned glass into the theater hall. Once unsealed, the poison is harmless after 30 minutes. So, she went to the lab 15 minutes after the play began. The poison container is too big to transport unnoticed. So she applied it to the glass in her bag with a paintbrush. Thus, the poison glass was created! She brought it back to the theater hall, then went on standby at the right end of the front row. Warna, who was acting on stage, was to switch out the poisoned glass. During the five second blackout 30 minutes into the play, Yoshiko placed the poisoned glass in the wings. Warna, on stage, retrieved it and hid it under her costume. Then, in the scene where she approaches the shelf, she exchanged the glass there with the poisoned one. Switching in the murder weapon on stage while everyone is watching? What a pervy exhibitionist! What's perverted about that? The perversion of justice, Yuma. Which, to be fair, I mean, is all the peacekeepers' fault, really. Like, 
they done like a single little glimpse in. Sure, I mean, even for this like to have all been covered up, right? Surely Karen's got to be a big fucking deal, right? Like beyond just the fact that it's obviously uh, a fucking uh, Amaterasu Corporation aligned school. Surely Karen's got to be a big deal for them to want to go out of their way to not only clean this up nice and quick, but so, so discreetly tuck the, the murder under the rug, right, of Aiko. And Kurene, on the lights, would guide Karen to take the poisoned glass. Then came the duel of poison cups! The two glasses on the shelf had juice poured into them. Karen and Warana shuffled them in a way the audience couldn't see. But Kurene, who was on the catwalk directly above the stage, saw exactly which glass held the poison. She confirmed the location of the poisoned glass, and shone the spotlight on it first. Karen drank from that glass 45 minutes after the start of the play. Winner, winner! Good job! I think it was actually the shortest one so far, but thank you. Kurene told Cotton of a change in stage direction, but the victim was to take the glass the spotlight hits first. Cotton followed this instruction to take the poison one. The whole sequence of events for this crime would have been impossible for a single person. Their cooperation was also a means to conceal their involvement. But I can't shake the feeling that there was some other reason behind it. A crime committed by ruthless criminals. Those loathsome culprits are... Yoshiko! Warana! Kurame! It was you! Wait, what? They may have pretended to always be at odds with one another. But deep down, they were bonded through their shared admiration for Aiko. No big old gotcha this time, huh? This is my answer! Was there really no other way? Uh, to be honest, Yuma... In the real world, yes. In this one? Honestly, probably not. Should they have still done it? No. However, clearly uh, justice had been eluded here and was going to be forever eluded. It's, uh... It is a bit of a bitter pill. I'll say that, like, I'm not, you know, I still can't condone them, but... Can I truly condemn in their specific situation? I mean, yes, again, you know, again, you know gonna come out and say it. Murder bad, but... Was there no way to prove Karin did this without killing her? To be honest... Probably not. I mean, there's literally nothing except circumstantial evidence that ties Karin to the crime, right? So I could, like, arguably her testimony. But realist- like, it, it doesn't matter, right? Unfortunately, which is kind of- that- that's the grim, sad reality of this game, right? That it kind of doesn't matter how obvious the killers are. If it's against the peacekeeper's interests for that truth to come to light, it's not going to come to light. You know? 
the, 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 the underlying tragedy of Danganronpa is that it's a lot of kids killing each other. Their, their lives haven't even started yet and they're already over. Here, it's kind of that the truth doesn't matter until we step in. All that matters is what the, the big guy wants. Which actually is very realistic, come to think of it, but that's neither here nor there. That's not possible. Not in Kanai Ward. Exactly. The peacekeepers bend the truth whichever way they want to. The three girls couldn't get justice from them. Which led to this crime. But that... it doesn't make it right! True. Thank you. You speak in my language, Yuma. How long did you put on an act for this? Aiko... was our sunlight. Wherever she went, we were meant to be there with her. She was... everything to us. We were together ever since we were young. Her dream was our dream. We were nothing special. But she called us her rivals. Those words encouraged us to carry on. But now she's gone. Everything's hopeless now. The three of us investigated Aiko's death. I used my parents' connections to view top secret case files. Wow, and even that. Even using your own sway. But no matter what we did, the peacekeepers refused to reopen the case. Because Karen's father is a big shot at Amaterasu mm -hmm. Corporation. Knew it. That's why we had to do it ourselves. We wanted revenge. Revenge became everything for us. And that is unfortunately where you lost yourselves. Revenge is, uh... Very, very, very rarely the answer. And to get it, we pretended to fight amongst ourselves. We are actors, after all. But we don't have to anymore, right? We don't have to keep this up. Oh no! Oh, don't put it- Oh no, that's gonna make me sad! We put on quite a show. Didn't we, Aiko? See, Shinigami's already gone off to reap their souls. This leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Then again, most cases do. But that's the end. We can finally return to the real world. I hope the girls open up like that in the real world, too. Oh, oh he doesn't know! No, I don't think they can. Huh? Why is that? Oh, also, <laughs> where's Shinigami? Right here. Well, what do you think? Did you fall in love with me? I know you did. You must have, yeah? I already told you. I will never fall for you. You're seriously getting on my nerves. You're annoying and exhausting. Bit of a taste of your own medicine, huh? <laughs> Sorry, I'm just giving her a hard time. Uh, Desuhiko? <laughs> Did you think I was serious? Can handle getting shot down, my man. I was just testing the bond between you two. <laughs> uh, Koi's a gem. A bond? It's more like a curse. At least to me. Uh, right. I was just testing. I, I wasn't serious at all. I didn't get rejected, okay? I didn't. No, it's okay, buddy. You didn't. It was all just. It was all just jokes. It was all. Uh, all right. Just calm down. Anyway, let's do it. Time to exterminate.
exterminate the souls of the true culprits and destroy the mystery labyrinth. Wait, Shinigami, do we really have to do this? Yeah, we can't get out if we don't. I mean, they... They're murderers. The reason why doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, I fundamentally disagree with... I mean, functionally, the death penalty, right? Like, <laughs> really? I fundamentally disagree with it, but... Unfortunately, by the rules of the universe... I make my living reaping the souls of criminals. Because I'm Shinigami! We just, like, feed you Karin's soul instead? I guess she's already dead, right? I mean, it's gonna really do that, but... Surging bloodlust. Overflowing despair. The brilliant soul of Shinigami. Shall expunge this cursed case! Death to all deplorables! Into the vile mystery labyrinth! How traumatized do you think the student body is going to be when three more people suddenly drop dead? Think they're going to be alright with that, maybe? Think Shinigami's maybe going to pop into one of them, just say like, Oh, hey guys, <laughs> yeah, we did it, we worked together, <laughs> lol, <laughs> xd, lol, ha <laughs> I think that's, uh, I think that's what's going to go down. With Desuhiko, I don't want to hear about your bangs right now, alright? When did... you... Huh? What the... Oh yeah, we moved. Wait, what just happened? Oh, oh, hold on, let's so calm Yeah, just down. look over there, where three people were about to just suddenly die. What? Now they really fucking ragdolled too. I knew it. <laughs> the evil murderers have been expunged once again. Oh, right. There's still one more job I gotta do. Should have got me. This feels like a really dumb idea. Excuse me, everyone. The culprits behind this incident were Waruna, Karne, and myself. All three of us conspired to poison Karin. Uh, the way we got her to ingest the poison was... No, Shinigami! Get, tell them the motive! Share the motive! I don't know what you people have done, but next time it won't go your way. Remember that. Yeah, uh, we'll see you next time for a real showdown. Since you only showed up for like five minutes this time. Did you see that? <laughs> she was staring at me the whole time. She's gotta be in love with me. Surely. Oh, fine. I guess she can keep the peace of my love as well. <sighs> hey, what's got you so down? All three of them just died out of nowhere. Nobody's to blame for that. Oh, no, no, uh, I'm afraid that we are directly responsible for that. There's no reason for either of us to feel guilty. 
seems like all the memories from the mystery labyrinth are completely gone. Yeah, now he's accidentally rubbing it in. At least we saved Kurumi, I guess. Master, we're in the clear. All three of their deaths won't be your fault now. That's not what I'm worried about. Kurumi? Thank you for saving me. I knew you'd come to the rescue. Oh, she's unaffected by all of them dying. <laughs> I mean, she wasn't really friends with them anyway. Um, I guess as far as she's concerned, they are all just kind of murderers, but... <sighs> Shinigami, you should have just told them the motive! Come on, you could have exposed Karin right then and there! And as well as the corruption of the peacekeepers! To an entire student- well, not an entire student body, but to like a, a, a small chunk of the student body! God damn it, Shinigami! <sighs> anyway, are you alright? The peacekeepers didn't harm you, did they? No, I'm fine. Hey, Yuma? I don't want to get in the way of this tearful reunion, <laughs> but maybe we should get out of here. It'll be trouble if the peacekeepers come back. Yeah, you know, dudes and all. Oh yeah, that's a good point actually. Oh, right. Let's leave then. Yeah, we can hug outside, you know? Look, I haven't seen this loading screen before. Uh, what's up, Shinigami? Don't... No, I, I know you're feeling a little more frustrated than that. Don't play it all coy. Come on, jog on. Fold up your little map. We've got like an ending cutscene to do. I'm, I'm sure Yako is going to be like, Oh, what were you doing? I just wanted breakfast. I want to head to the agency and put in a good word for you. Aw, thanks, big guy. I don't really get how it all ended, but I have a hunch. Yuma, you did all the work, right? <laughs> huh? Huh, guess he's got good intuition. <laughs> Looks like I won't be calling you rookie from here on out. Oh, you. Let's keep working together, my man. Mind your manners as you walk your girl home. Thanks for also being a wingman! <sighs> yeah, sorry, it's uh, also a little bit awkward and tense, huh? Um, Yuma? Yeah, are you about to say about the novice thing? Huh? What is it? This tension! Don't tell me! Is this where they make babies? No, I, I don't think so. Not yet. Did something happen? You seem down. Oh, well... Although the case was solved, three lives were lost. Right. I didn't expect Yoshiko and the others to... <sighs> um, could it be that their deaths are related to your forte? Yes? What? Wow, we've got another sharp one. Master, I hope you know this, but if you say anything about our contract... Oh, sorry for saying something so strange. I know I'm off, right? Even if that were the case, you'd never tell me. <sighs> hey, Kurumi, there's somewhere I want to go. Will you come with me? Uh-huh. Sure. I guess. Oh, where are we going? We're not taking her to the agency, are we? I don't know if Yako is gonna like that. I mean, she'll love it. Oh. Well, that's good to know. Not looking so good for Seth, huh? <laughs> <clears throat> oh, 
Oh, no. Oh, we're going to show her the same sight that Yako oh, showed us. Yeah. What a nice view. It's like a secret hideout. I didn't know that Kamasaki had a place like this. Yeah, Please, posh girls, huh? Help me save this city. Save this city, huh? I managed to save Kurumi by solving the case. But I killed those three girls. I'm responsible for their demise. If I had let the peacekeepers deal with it, at least their deaths could have been prevented. What exactly did I even solve? Yeah, well, I mean, and literally as we just saw, uh, not unlikely that, uh, would have at least put Kurumi on that death list. It's not a true solution if we can't save everyone. Alas, unfortunately. What I gained in exchange for my memories isn't some convenient mystery-solving tool. It's literally the power of a death god. What are you musing about? You can't reclaim the past, and you're not going to get your memories back either. In the end, you just have to accept it. Accept it? Instead of believing in some vague thing like justice, just believe in the truth. Well, you could believe in both. Granted, it has to be your justice. And I don't think Yuma's justice is killing people. But, you know. They say there's only one truth. And there's only one type of person who can find their way to that truth. Detectives. Uh, I mean, I, I guess in this world. Even if I have to sacrifice others to find it, I should let so many people die for the truth? Master, you keep going to extremes. It's part of why you're a greenhorn. Uh, seems like you still have much to learn under my guidance. I mean, you say that, Shinigami. But multiple people do die every single time we're on a case. People that could be saved through other means, you know? That's, I mean, granted not here, but that is kind of what prison's there for, you know? It's there for rehabilitation nowadays, not just detention. What is the truth? Why did I become a detective to seek it? You? Huh? Oh, yes? I know I already said this, but... Thank you so much. You are exactly the kind of person I thought you were. What do you mean by that? You're my hero. I'm no hero. I was just trying to expose the truth. And you did. But thanks to you, I was saved. If you weren't around, I wouldn't be here today. All right, let's, let's, look, let's look at it this way then, Yuma. Sure, yeah, three people died, and that is rough. Um, but an innocent person was saved in exchange for the guilty. You know? If there is any small solace here, it is that. That's why a detective who exposes the truth is a hero in my book. If there were more detectives like you in this city... Maybe Aiko's death would have been solved earlier. And it wouldn't have come to this. I'm sure things would have been different. <sighs> Kanai Ward hasn't seen a hero like you in forever. That's why it's always been so dark here. So please. Please continue to be our hero. A hero? Maybe before I lost my memories... I was trying to become someone's hero. This time, there was a steep price to be paid for exposing the truth. But even so, the truth must always be revealed. I want to believe I can save someone. I want to continue being the hero she says I am. Still, I don't want to use Shinigami's powers again. Ah, <laughs> yeah. You plumb out of luck there, mate. You don't like it, Master! Well, I'm just glad you 
seem more motivated now. Oh, yeah. We made a promise, didn't we? I said I'd tell you about Kanai Ward's ultimate secret after the case was solved. You did, and I completely forgot about that. Huh? Uh, oh, right. Hey, you seem like you weren't expecting much. <laughs> well... But that's where you're wrong. Just between you and me... I am the leader of Amaterasu Corporation. What? <laughs> no, obviously I did not. That no. But if that happened, I'd I'd punch someone. I do not want another high school girl ruling the world. All right, Junko can suck an egg. I am Kanai Ward's only informant. Informant? Is that like a self-ascribed title or? Are you serious? A high school girl informant? I'm still a beginner, though. I started three years ago after taking over from my grandfather. And now that the peacekeepers control the city, there isn't much of a demand for information anymore. No wonder you know so much about rumors. Besides... Are we sitting on a nest egg of information? I haven't felt this nervous since I was chased by those peacekeepers. True, she that was, also uh... explains why the peacekeepers were after you. <laughs> if Kurumi is an informant, maybe she does have some crucial information about Kanai Ward's ultimate secret. Well. Can we just look at this view for a little bit more? <sighs> for a little bit longer, even? Kanai Ward, Amaterasu Corporation, peacekeepers? I have no idea what's in store for me. <laughs> No point worrying about the future. It is what it is. You don't have a worry in the world, do you, Shinigami? I do have one worry. That this bitch is gonna steal you from me. Yeah. Yeah. So, Kurumi, what do you know about Kanai Ward's ultimate secret? Well... It's likely connected to the top-secret research that Amaterasu Corporation is conducting. I think it has something to do with why the Unified Government approved of Kanai Ward's isolation. Oh, okay. Top-secret research? Approved the isolation? Kanai Ward has always been a city centered around Amaterasu. But there was a lot more freedom in the past. People were allowed to come and go as they pleased. As we've heard, yeah. It became an autonomous zone, free from the Yuji's influence only a few years ago. The Yuji? The underground? The reason behind it has to do with the top secret research that Amaterasu is conducting. But what is the research? I don't know all the details, but it's supposed to be able to change the entire structure of the world. Oh, nice. Please don't tell me it's got anything to do with, like, despair in the name. All nations and enterprises worldwide want it. This research is what turned Amaterasu into a major global corporation. And that research is being done in Kanai Ward? Uh, we've also said something about how it's probably responsible for the rain, right? Or at least Amaterasu Corp is. I think so. It would explain why Kanai Ward's been isolated. It's so their research doesn't leak out. Research that can change the world? If that's true, it's some serious stuff. No wonder true number that. one of the WDO would risk his neck here. Do you know any more details about that research? I do know a little bit. Grandpa risked his life to obtain one piece of confidential information about Amaterasu Corp. And I believe that somehow, it has to be related. What do okay. you mean? And research to create a homunculus, an immortal monster. Huh. Okay, not where I thought this would go. Homunculus? Immortal monster? Now wait just a minute. Hang on a dilly damn second, is that a real human on that billboard? We don't look like that. Are you serious? I don't have any proof. But it's a fact that Amaterasu Corporation has previously researched homunculi. Really? Homunculi being researched in this city? 
Is that Kanai Ward's ultimate secret? Immortal monsters? Monkey It's turned into a fantasy story out of nowhere. Yeah, says you. Oh, I'm sure not one to talk. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you're self-aware. That's all I know. Well, is my information useful to you? Probably? Although, most of it was left behind by my grandpa. Well, you're the one who delivered it, not Gramps. So. Left behind? One day, my grandpa just vanished. He's been missing ever since. You know, I, I did think this. It, it's not number one, is it? it, it your, your Gramps isn't going to be number one, is he? That's why I decided to take over where Grandpa left off as an informant. So, do you think what I've shared might help? Either that, or we're later gonna find him. He is an a, a homunculi or something. Yeah, this is huge, considering how I had nothing until now. Really? That's great. I'm actually useful to a master detective. Sure. Uh... Oh, um, about that master detective thing. Look, that's where my grandpa used to live. Wow, you are really bad at listening. Uh, that takes me back. I wish I could see him again. <sighs> oh well. And that's how you'll keep taking advantage of a high school girl, huh? By the way, Kurumi, why do you think your grandfather disappeared? I wonder why. Could it be the peacekeepers? No, I don't think the peacekeepers have anything to do with it. Grandpa vanished before Khan and Ward became isolated. He was just suddenly gone. But I do believe I'll see him again someday. Master, forget about some geezer you don't even know. What about this homunculus stuff? Mm hmm. Some geezer we don't even know. Hey, okay, 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 okay. Homunculus research. If Amaterasu Corporation is still researching some immortal monster in Kanai Ward, it makes sense why there'd be such tight security. They fear the secret leaking to the outside world. Maybe it even has something to do with the great global mystery that number one mentioned. Speaking of which, what could the great global mystery be anyway? There's too much stuff we don't know, but you're one step ahead of the other detectives now, yeah? Uh, just for now though. Guess that flat-chested uggo is kind of useful. I should stop calling her Ugo now. I'll just call her flat. Baby steps, Shinigami, baby steps. Still gonna hold on to that, huh? I guess this is technically an improvement. You're gonna keep this info to yourself, right? It'll help you get ahead of the other master detectives. Yeah, but I kinda need to share it with them. No, I'll report this to everyone. This isn't something I can deal with alone. I wouldn't do that publicly. <laughs> That's not my role. All I can do is investigate Kanai Ward's ultimate secret just a little bit further. The rest should be left to the real master detectives to handle. <laughs> this is my fault as your mentor for babying you so much. Well, you do call me an amateur a lot. You've become the kind of detective who only relies on others without trying to solve problems yourself. What's wrong with relying on others? Oh man, we're still going. I already thought we'd uh, get the ending Thank little cutscene so there. For today. The pleasure is all mine. Yeah, a lot of, well, eh, pleasure. A lot of stuff just happened in the past 24 hours for me. What a wild day. Maybe I should go buy a meat bun on the way home. Oh no, I was supposed to do that for cheap! I know exactly where this is going. You like those meat buns too, huh? Yes, I love them. I eat at least one every two days. They're kind of the comfort food of Kanai Ward. It's like I'm instinctively drawn to them. Oh yeah? Oh, would you like to join me, Yuma? No thanks, I'll pass. I see. Damn. Rejected. 
No, no, wait, no, 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 I, I didn't. Oh. Um. Will we meet again? Huh? I mean, you are on the box, and the fact that you're not dead does indicate that you probably will show up. Yeah. Of you course. even have a last name. That's great. If you ever need any information, you can count on me. See you later. I hope she's okay on her own. I couldn't bring myself to say, I'll walk you home. Ah, oh, Desuhiko even set you up for it, Yuma. He's gonna be so disappointed. Just say it. What are you, 12? Are you Maybe. sure you don't want to no, go wait, back no, to I didn't mean... agency? Weren't you running an errand a while ago? <sighs> You're right. Oh no, I better hurry back. You're supposed to get the meat buns, Yuma! You even could have got some with your girlfriend! Wow. Oh. What a screw up. Ah, oh, Desuhiko's gonna be so disappointed. He's gonna make fun of us. He wingmanned so well and we squandered the opportunity, Yuma. It's alright, we've still got another like three chapters. Or so. Okay, I don't actually know how long this game is. I'm pretty sure it's only five chapters long, but. Well, I mean, I guess it's functionally sick, since the prologue was its own case, but... <laughs> hey, Chief. How's it going? Homunculus research. I still can't believe it's true. Does it ring a bell, Chief? Unfortunately, I've never even heard of it. You sure it's not just some rumor? The way Kurumi explained it leads me to think it's true. Regardless, there's too little information. We lack anything definite at the moment. Still, it's better than having nothing at all. Well done, Yuma. Oh, thanks, Hamura. Thank you. You're like a dog wagging its tail whenever you get complimented. And what's wrong with that, huh? What's wrong with that? You were late getting back, but I never imagined you'd get yourself into another mess. Ugh, what the hell is going on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm so angry, I'm talking with the left! I'm really sorry. Yeah, you sure you didn't just like bite your tongue or something, Chief? And your tail gets tucked between your legs whenever you get yelled at. Setting aside how I nearly died of hunger and that Yuma needs to be put on a leash. Oh, whoa, oh, 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 don't say that. I already am. You picked another fight with the Peacekeepers. That's the biggest problem here. Yeah, I'm on, <laughs> with one of the top dogs, too. We weren't picking a fight. Besides, we got to expose the truth in the end. That look on Martina's face was awesome. Right, Yuma? That's not what I'm talking about. How can you be so relaxed? There, there, Lisp Man. Please <laughs> remain calm. Hmm. Everyone, who is this stranger who has suddenly walked into the office? <laughs> so, is it true the culprits in that case suddenly died? That makes it similar to what happened in the Nailman case. Moreover, it is also similar in that those involved in each case, like Desuhiko and myself, had their memories wiped. There are too many common traits to call it a coincidence. Uh, um. The memories related to the case disappear. <laughs> Perhaps it is due to someone's forte. Uh, uh, uh. No way. What kind of useless forte would that be? Oh, oh thank God. Okay. Besides, no one here has an ability like that. Could another master detective have found their way here? It'd be one thing if we were anywhere else in the world, but we're in Kanai Ward. Well, I mean, look, I keep on going back to it. There was that one person on the train, right, in the prologue, who, yeah, could have been like Kurumi, right, doing her investigative, inspectory, informanty stuff. This isn't the kind of place what? some ambitious master detective could barge into by himself. I mean, also, we, we, well, you know, we, we know that Yuma is the reason, but... If someone got officially dispatched here, I would know. Anyway, 
Why are you all looking so glum? The case is closed and we got new information. It's a fantastic step forward. Yeah, he's looking on the bright side. It's spring time and all is right in the world. Don't play your guitar though. Spring? It rains all year long here. And we've had nothing but trouble. Ugh, just what the hell is going on here? It's like the hand of death itself. Oh no, how they know? <laughs> What's wrong, Vivia? You know what they say. The greater the detective, the more often they encounter death. Isn't that right, Yuma? Oh, he's on to us! Uh... That does kind of apply to you, Yuma. In a way, you're like a death detective. Oh, don't take it the wrong way. I mean that as a compliment. But even if it offends you, I refuse to apologize. Apologizing is too much of a hassle. I feel like saying that sentence was more of a hassle than just a sorry, but... Yeah, fair enough. The Death Detective. You have a cool nickname, Yuma. Yeah, uh, it kind of stings, though. No way! I don't want a nickname like that. Really? But it sounds so awesome! It seems death has taken a liking to you, Yuma. That's one of your talents, in a way. Oh no, he knows! <laughs> Sheesh. I'll never understand this guy. I'll figure out how to discipline Yuma later. For now, we need to come up with a plan to handle the peacekeepers. You said this case involved Vice Director Martina, right? She's Director Yomi's right-hand woman. Yeah, yeah. Sure to get a view of that. I yes, heard she's both his close advisor and his mistress. I'm sure they're gonna make a move somehow. I don't even want to think about it. What will they do? Oh, maybe that. See, this is what I'm talking about. Everyone, brace yourselves. Are you serious? <laughs> this is so fun! No, it is not, Fubuki! The agency is sinking. Where is everyone? Somebody help. Hey, Master! Snap out of it! Come on! Master! We're all about to die and wake up as homunculi. Oh, just you watch. Is that really where we're gonna end? I mean, what a cliffhanger. Oh, no, got a little bit more. Is that Yomi? Uh, boom! <laughs> oh, it sank yeah, it all sure right. Is. <laughs> oh, well, it uh, really was him. This is the bolt of judgment, the fire of purification, a supernova explosion! Hey, who prepared that torpedo? Unfortunately, it was I, Martina Electro. Yeah, I, it's about to be very unfortunate for me, I feel. Ah. Uh... I figured it was you. That wasn't enough firepower! I told you to blow up the whole river and vaporize them, didn't I? Now it just looks like I'm causing chaos! Half-assed executions of the law are nothing but senseless violence! Did not expect that to come out of his mouth. I told you to demonstrate perfect order! Listen. A clean and pure execution of the law is overwhelming, absolute, and completely blows everything away without a trace. I'm terribly sorry, Director Yomi. No matter. You are my beloved right hand. You only need to remain by my side. Yes, thank you. I will forever be by your side to serve you. That's nice bit of Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> Monica? Kodako? Is that you? Thing is, even though you're my beloved right hand, 
You still need to be punished. Oh, I'm sure she's looking forward to that. Huh? You couldn't even solve a case caused by a couple of brats. Not to mention the detectives escaped under your watch. But it's all right. Don't worry. You are my beloved right hand. I won't hurt you. I need you to stay pretty for me forever. I... I understand. So, what is my punishment? See this? It's a recent invention by Amaterasu Corporation called a High Performance Presser. It can compress up to 50 kilograms of material and instantly turn it into a cube. Uh... Even humans can be turned into pretty little cubes. Uh... Huh? I'll keep you on my person at all times, so you'll always be by my side. Uh... You are my beloved right hand. Please wait! What? You, you must be joking! Uh... Hey, you! Take my beloved right hand over there. Director Yomi, please wait! Please! Have mercy! Oh, Martina. There's something I wanted to ask you before you go. What's... love? <laughs> Take her away. Now, let's go find the corpses of those detectives that got blown up. Yeah, I don't think I've ever been stunned into silence with a dropped jaw quite like that. Ironically enough, since the whole Monica and Konako scene, you know the one. Oh, you oh, you writers on this team, you just have a way with words, don't you? What am I looking at here? A good day, sir. Oh, what's that? You don't know? I guess not, since you're still new. That's number one, the leader of the World Detective Organization. Th that's him? I had no idea. He's, He's got a cape just like me. Underground. There's a book vault here. It's a secret book vault that only number one can enter with his biometrics. It supposedly contains data from generations of great detectives, sealed books, and so on. Don't even think about going in there, newbie. I, I know. Hmm. Was it number one Gary in a little book just now? Oh. Uh, I wonder what that book was. Murder book. Well, Shinigami book. Well, you go investigate. You may be a trainee, but you're still a detective. Investigate? Man? <laughs> Kidding. Don't take it so seriously, Yuma. Yeah, I was gonna say, obviously, one of these guys is Yuma, right? And that's how it all started, apparently. So is that gonna be the end? No. <gasps> Good lord, this is the longest fucking epilogue of my life. Uh, huh? It's gonna be like a two hour video. Wait, where am I? Beats the hell out of me. But weren't you by my side the whole time? Don't you know what happened to us? Like that time back at the Amaterasu Express. I was only able to stay awake back then because we just made the pact and we weren't fully synchronized yet. 
but that didn't work this time. When you lose consciousness, my vision also goes dark. Actually, do you remember drifting in the river after the explosion? You almost died. Hell, even as a death god, I thought I was gonna die. <laughs> this is no laughing matter. <laughs> so who saved us? I only doubt it's the peacekeepers, so is it more detectives? Was it Kurumi? Did one of our detectives whip out their super awesome swimming skills? Anyway, because your biological activity stabilized, I was also able to wake up. Everything's A-OK -okay so far. Now, let's go find out where we are. I want to go exploring so bad my eyes are watering. That's a bit dramatic. Where are we? Let's check things out for now. Well, um... I mean, we better do this before we end the episode, surely. Um... This is... It's a large TV built into the wall. The power's off so I can see myself in the screen. Or reflected in the screen. <laughs> Mars is thinking of using that giant, scr giant screen to watch spicy videos. That's not what I'm thinking at all right now. Does that mean you're gonna think about it later? Uh, well, maybe. Oh my, this is quite nice. Oh, abstract painting fan. Hmm. I think this is what's called abstract. Looking at it makes me feel anxious. Hey. If it were up to you, Master, what would you title it? Cul-de-sac? Trash! Oh, that's uncalled for. Just because my art sensibilities aren't as good as yours. This is... Is this a painting? I can't tell what it's depicting at all. Mm -hmm. mm. <sighs> Truly an inspired piece. Shinigami, do you know how to interpret art? Definitely not. I'm just saying whatever pops into my head. <laughs> oh, great. Well, out we go. Hello? Ritzy. Oh, wow. Which, I mean, you could tell from the room. Hey, oh wait, you're the lady with the mask, aren't you? Hi there, nice to meet you. Dude with the mask, never mind. I sure look suspicious, huh? Yeah, um... Yeah, that's not, okay. Man, a lot of stuff just happened in the last ten minutes there. <laughs> Man, my stamina is never that good, huh? <laughs> uh, look, just because I get clapped a lot. Well, there we go. Uh, I'll try and keep this short and sweet, because this episode's already like an hour and 40 minutes long. But, um... Look, I mean, it's no surprise I really liked that chapter. Though, funnily enough, I think the case was the worst bit. Well, not the worst bit, but the weakest bit. It was... I mean, I, I'd figured it all out before we even went in, right? Like, I'd, I'd put it all together. Because it's a pretty obvious case, and I think the game does know that it's a pretty obvious case. But, it, I mean, it was, it, it was good. Like, the investigation bit felt interesting. Um, and I'll be honest, I think maybe if I, w if I wasn't so used to this genre of game, I think the fact that, you know, the girls were all very, uh, I don't know, vitriolic, I guess, against each other could have actually thrown me off once upon a time. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I'm pretty... I'm pretty used to this genre of video game. I, I, you know. Or not even video game, necessarily, but, like, this genre of story. So, uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty, uh... 
pretty well acquainted with the idea that, um, you know, it, it doesn't have to be that surface level. Relationships are a bit deeper than that. They can just lie to you. Um, so yeah, like the case itself, very predictable, really easy to figure out, but enjoyable in its own right. Um, I will say, if we just don't have Martina now, and I have a fun... I have a funny feeling if someone's going to be a homunculi at some point in this game. Might be her. However, I mean, if they if they did just axe her right then and there. Wow. <laughs> Yomi is deliciously evil. I've got to say. Th this guy is what Danganronpa 1 Junko felt like. You know, just... So, so evil, and loving every second of it. But they also clearly have, like, their own ideology. It's not, like, fully explored, but you can kind of see it, right? They tell you just enough that it can be like, okay, I kind of get it. I kind of get how they operate. But I also can't tell too well how they operate, which keeps them, like, an unpredictable, uh, threatening antagonist, right? Or just straight-up villain in their cases. That's good. That's some good stuff. I'm, I'm, what can I say? I guess I'm a Yomi fan. <laughs> Not something you want to hear from anyone ever. Um, but yeah, no, good, good. I like him. I like him as an antagonist here. Um, Masked Man, I, I thought was going to be a bit more antagonistic, but, um, I mean, I guess it makes sense that of all the places we could have ended up, for somewhere that ritzy, it was probably going to be Amaterasu Corporation. I don't know why we've been saved, but uh, we have. I guess we'll get into that next episode. Tomorrow for me, of course. But um, Well, actually, no, it is tomorrow for you as well, right? Because that, that'll be Thursday's episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, the, the, the rest of the stuff here was actually pretty... Pretty good. The investigation, a little bit before the investigation, just like with Desahiko, his uh, forte and Kurumi, I, I enjoyed. Um, yeah, no, it was all good stuff. It was all really interesting. It's it's a uh, it was a lot of stuff that I haven't really that I haven't really seen before in this this kind of game, wrapped up in things that I have seen. Right, this, this is something that I kind of thought of. Um, in the middle of this case that I didn't really, that I, I didn't say anything about. Um, the way this, this ended up was kind of like the inverse of that one, um, Ace Attorney Dual Destiny's case, if you know, you know. Um, and like that, that's, that's a great case. That's a great Ace Attorney case. Um, and th this one was pretty good too. Of course, uh, I don't know, I, 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 I got all hesitant -y there. I don't know where I'd rank this, though. I still think the first case was the best one, as a, as a case, anyway, as, like, a whole chapter. I think this one was really good. Uh, it kind of had that same problem, though, at the end, right? Where I didn't, like, I felt bad for, for the girls, right? Warana, Yoshiko, Kurane. I, I did feel bad for them. But at the same time... I could have felt way worse for them if I knew them just a little better. I think they did it a little bit better here than with the, with the prologue case. Because, um, I mean, obviously part of like the prologue case setup is... Oh yeah, you don't need to know that much about these guys. Obviously, you're going to get to know them later on, right? Only for the, you know, the rug pull, and it's like, Oh shit, they're all dead! Um, you know, whereas this time around, you know, they're, they're one case characters. Uh, could have got a little bit more out of them, just to, just to make me feel a little bit worse. But like, you know, I, I, I still felt bad enough, and I, I think ultimately... It's okay because of the other thing that, the, like, the main thing I'd say that this game is doing that I haven't really seen in any other one of these games is, uh, funnily enough, humor. Because, <laughs> like, on paper, wow, what a I, I mean, it, it's Makoto. 
J- just insert generic, kind of like protagonist guy. You know, he, he's a bit weak-willed, but he's he's gonna fight for justice. Um, but I mean, I mean, we've got peppers of this, especially last chapter, as opposed to the, the, the prologue, but especially last chapter and this chapter. We've got, like, the, the, this forming idea of, like, what is justice to Yuma? But also, like, what is justice generally? What What is the truth? What's the, What truth is worth seeking? You know? Planting the, the seeds for that. And while ultimately... It, it, it's probably either going to swing in the direction of WDO good or WDO bad, potentially falling somewhere in the middle. Uh, and like that, that that's ultimately where it's going to end up. Where we're like, no, you can't discard your feelings, but yes, we should track down the truth. It, it's probably going to end up being something like that. Um, but still, like laying the seeds here as they have at the moment is interesting as well as getting into Yuma's motivation behind wanting to pursue the truth it's good stuff it's really good stuff um yeah i guess i guess the only thing left to discuss are our two i guess quote unquote main characters here uh desuhiko and kurumi kurumi's fine you know we haven't really met her well i say met her we haven't really gotten to know her too well yet but you know she's cute she's bubbly she's fun uh pretty standard i i feel of the, that kind of character uh if she cut i imagine she's going to be around a little bit more i don't know how much more but i have a feeling she's probably going to be a recurring character and that that's nice but, you know i like her enough so i'm happy with that and desuhiko you know what i ended up liking him way more than i thought i would I, you know, there were still a couple of times where it's like, hey, dude, come on. Mainly it was like the looking at Warrena, I want to bang you thing. Like that was, that that was a bit much, you know? I know? It just felt like extra, I think I said this, but it feels extra insidious to say that behind her back. Uh, yeah, I just, that, that, that one rubbed me the wrong way. The rest of it, like, eh, you know. I think, I think, I think, I, 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 I think here was the the key with Desuhiko, right? For starters, the the voice acting, Koi Dao fucking absolutely kills it. He, he, what a charismatic performance! But um, also the Desuhiko, for the most part, feels more like a wannabe ladies' man than generic anime pervert. I mean, don't get me wrong, he dips into generic anime pervert and like that that's where that's definitely where he's at his worst but like this almost insecurely masculine dude who like thinks he's really smooth but obviously isn't and he's kind of got his like not a stick up his ass that's the wrong that's the complete wrong word but he he's got a pretty bloated ego kind of thing right like, that, that is a completely different archetype of character that does tend to swing over, but it is a completely different archetype of character. And I think it's a more enjoyable one, personally, than generic anime pervert, and I think Desuhiko does it fairly well. Uh, obviously, gonna need to spend a little bit more time with him, mainly through the gabs, for me to really be like, yeah, I, I like Desuhiko. Because as, as it is now, you know, I appreciate that they also went with, you know, he's kind of a bro rather than just, Oh, Yuma, you're getting the girls and I'm not. Ah, oh, but I'm so much cooler than you. You know, if, if if he was a whiny little bitch as well. Nah, 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 nah. Okay, get out of here, Desuhiko. Get out of here. But no, as is, I actually do quite like Desuhiko. Uh, I have a funny feeling he probably will end up being my least favorite um, of the of this detective cast, and I, I feel like that's probably consistent with the rest of the fandom, if I had to guess. But uh, you know, I still liked him, and I, I really like this case overall. Um, yeah, don't want to hold us up too much. I really liked it. That ending as well? Holy shit! 
That was some good fucking stuff! But yeah, I'm going to end it there. Thank you guys so much for watching. I assume next time we'll be getting in... Well, actually, we'll, we'll probably just be doing side quests, huh? Next episode, if my track record is anything to go by. But the episode after that, which will be another week, <clears throat> we'll probably start off with the Fubuki case, which could be fun. So yeah, I hope to see you then. And until then, goodbye.